Hello and welcome to Great Clacton Parish for this our special Remembrance Sunday service. And maybe this year, as we've seen some of the terrible things that have gone on in our world, country against country at war, people against people at war, Remembrance Sunday is even more special and even more relevant. In this service we'll use some things that we recorded in previous years as well as some that are especially recorded for today. And so it's over to St John's as we start our time together. A very warm welcome to Great Clacton Parish and to our Remembrance Sunday service today. Remembrance Sunday gives us a chance to pause and to be quiet, to remember and to give thanks, and to reflect on our own lives. We will have our act of remembrance in just a few minutes' time and then join with many across the rest of the country for the two-minute silence at 11am. But first of all, we have a great hymn often used on this Sunday, O oh God, our help in ages past. It's inspired by the words of Psalm 90 and today Rachel leads us in singing that. And so we pray, Father God, as we pause to remember the great sacrifice of others, help us to be ever grateful for the freedom that we have and the peace that our country enjoys. May we also begin to understand the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus and the eternal peace that it can bring. And as we reflect on these things, make us more willing to follow his ways and to value, love and work for that peace that only he can provide. Through him who is the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to our act of remembrance. 
when we remember the sacrifice made by so many in our parish. We're grateful to be joined once more this year by Christian Rice for the laying of the wreath. Let us remember before God those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of others. We name particularly today from our own war memorial 1914 to 1918 Private Stanley Aldous Lance Corporal William Annie Rifleman David Armstrong Private George Barron Private Chester Barrett Private Frederick Bayman Private Bertram Bennett Second Lieutenant Sidney Bennett Private Arthur Bridges Private Frederick Bridges Private Sidney Britton Sergeant Rene Burwood Private Rufus Carrington Private Albert Clark Private David Clark Private Harold Cole Private William Everett Private Alfred Fairhead Lieutenant Lionel Flanagan Private Graham Gunner Watts Private Henry Garnham Leading Seaman A. E. Gladwell C. Gregg Second Lieutenant Arthur Gunn Seaman Edward Hammond Gunner Sidney Hammond Corporal Sidney Hardy Acting Corporal John Harrington Private George Harvey Lead Stoker Arthur Hatcher Corporal Henry Hooper Rifleman William Hooper Rifleman Edwin Horton Acting Captain Eric Hughes Private James Ingerfield Sergeant F. W. Jenkins Guardsman Adolphus Joy Private Thomas Joy Lance Corporal James Kenyon Private Evelyn King A. Kitchen Sailor Joseph Kittle Rifleman William Kittle Private Aitken Levy Private Stanley Lockwood Lance Corporal Fred Martin Rifleman Geoffrey Meaden Rifleman Claude Mills Gunner Frank Mills H. H. Nicholson Able Seaman William Page Private Walter Page Private Frederick Peck J. Poulson Private Ralph Pooley Private Frederick Potter Gunner Henry Rand Private Thomas Randall Private Randall Private Stanley Revit Lance Corporal Reginald Saunders Private Alfred Sawyer Gunner Frank Sayer Private Ernest Scott Private Arthur Seaman Second Lieutenant Anson Sylvester Second Lieutenant Percy Simmons Lance Corporal Cecil Smith Lance Corporal Harold Smith Private Edward Stebbing Gunner Lauren Stralger Private Charles Taylor Private Henry Unglis Driver J. H. Erie Private Henry Valentine Private Stanley Watling Rifleman Arthur Watton Driver Robert Walton Gunner Edmund Wright 
and from 1939 to 1945. Gunner George Barham, Private Arthur Bibby, Lance Corporal Victor Bynes, R.T. Clark, Flight Sergeant Peter Eames, Lance Bombardier Roy Finch, Gunner William Frost, J. Gunning, Captain Samuel Jarvis, Bombardier Evan Jenkins, Private Walter Ling, Ordinary Seaman Bruce Morrison, Driver Wallace Morrison, Trooper Reginald Rampling, Lieutenant Colonel Cedric Russell, Bombardier Leonard Terry, Marine Ernest Wellen, Sergeant Leonard Wybry, Gunner Stanley Wybry. Corporal Eric Youngman. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
for Remembrance Sunday. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn about by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One of the parts of the Bible that has given strength and help and comfort to Christians caught up in conflict is Psalm 46. And it can be a comfort to any of us who are facing difficulties and dangerous times. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And then the chorus, a repeated line that comes up in this psalm. The Lord Almighty, that is the Lord of hosts, is with us. And again at the end, the Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts, is with us. We're going to use the form of that psalm put into a wonderful hymn. Pam is going to lead us as we sing, God is our strength and refuge. During this service, we will be using some bits that were recorded over the last couple of years, as well as some bits that have been especially uh, recorded uh, for this year. And that's really because some uh, things are, are quite hard uh, to record in a service like this, and some things were, came across so specially uh, that I felt it was right to, to use them again. And one thing I would like to use again that I did show last year was a special extra bit, a special children's spot that uh, looked at the life of one soldier who fought in the First World War and how that linked to a very special uh, Bible verse. I recorded this um, on one evening when there was lots of fireworks going off and so uh, we got some special sound effects, sometimes at the right time for what was being said, uh, maybe sometimes at the wrong time. But I hope you will uh, bear with that as we have our extra bit today. And that will lead us through, and the Bible verse it points to, 
will lead us through to Mark Holdaway's part in the service today as he leads us into our confession and Bible reading and uh, talk. And big thank you to him for taking part in today's service as well. I want to tell you about a story about someone who fought in the war, in the First World War. It's a true story. Now I'm standing in front of our war memorial that helps us remember those people who died in the First World War in our parish. But of course lots of other people fought bravely even though they didn't die. And I want to tell you one story about one of them, a man called Ronald Merchant. You can see his full story on the Bible Society website. Now, Ronald was from Kent, and he and his three brothers went off to fight in the First World War. And he was just 19 years old when he went. He became a stretcher bearer. That was someone who carried sick and wounded soldiers to the, the hospital tent. And he spent four years bringing back wounded men who had been wounded in what was called no man's land. Now no man's land in the First World War was the space between the trenches, the enemy's trench and your own soldier's trench, and it was a very dangerous place because people were always firing bullets across it. And we've got some sound effects here. Those aren't real bullets, those are just some fireworks going off outside, but maybe very appropriate. And in this no man's land, it was often full of uh, holes that had been made by explosions uh, and barbed wire as well. So his job was a dangerous job, bringing back wounded soldiers from that. And every night they would go out when the enemy couldn't see them and they would find the wounded soldiers and bring them back on stretchers. But then when the sun came up, they were given the order not to go out anymore because it was too risky that they would be seen by the enemy and they would be shot at. But during a, a special uh, battle, or a very famous battle called Passchendaele, Ronald won a medal for bravery. Because one morning, the chaplain, that was the church minister for the, that part of the army, the chaplain came to Ronald and said to him, there are still two men, wounded men, left out in no man's land. If you will go, I will go with you. We need to save them. Now he didn't really want to go because he thought he would get shot by the enemy. But he knew it was the right thing to do. So they went out into no man's land, into that very dangerous place. They find the two men and they just carried them back over their shoulders to safety. Now, Ronald and his brothers were all Christians. And his grandson says he thinks his faith is what made him do what he did. He put himself in danger for others. He, he put his life in danger for others. In fact, there are some people in the, the First World War in the army who did just what Ronald did, but actually lost their lives doing it. Here's the war memorial of one of them. You might see that on that memorial, sorry, the, the, the memorial plaque for one of them. And you might see that on that memorial plaque, there's a verse from the Bible. And it's a verse that we're going to be thinking about in our service today. It says some words that Jesus did, that greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. This person tried to rescue his friends and, and died doing it. And it's a verse from the Bible that you see on quite a lot of war memorials and gravestones of soldiers. But it's also a verse from the Bible that's true of Jesus. I want to see if you can work out why. We'll begin with some very famous and well-known words, particularly used today. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. We've come together.
to worship God, to offer him praise and thanksgiving for our nation's deliverance in time of war, to call to mind those who through death, injury or bereavement suffered to bring peace and freedom to our world, to seek forgiveness for our failure to achieve reconciliation between nations and to ask for strength to overcome evil and injustice wherever it is found. And as those words suggest, we come to our confession. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He also said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. As we realise our failure to live up to Christ's standards and to obey his commands, let us come in penitence to seek God's forgiveness as we say together. Almighty and merciful God, Lord of people and nations, we confess with shame the sins, both private and public, by which we have broken your law and grieved your spirit. We acknowledge the reproach that we have brought upon the name of Christ. We confess our lack of love for you and others. For the sake of your Son who died for us, save us from our sins. Take from us all hatred and bitterness, whether in thought, word or action. Teach us to forgive as we are forgiven, so that we may grow like him and live our lives according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading is Matthew chapter 18 and verses 10 to 14. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he's happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, one of the things we do is remember love. That love for others. the way that to others have shown active and costly love towards us. A love that wants the best for others and gives up a great deal. And our reading from Matthew is about love for others and that love that wants the best for others and gives up a great deal. The chapter begins with a question about being great who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. But the answer is from Jesus, it's not about being great. What you need to worry about is about being in. And being in the kingdom is about being humble. It means looking after and loving each other. Verse 10, don't look down on others. Don't look down on others. If you do that, you won't be loving them because God welcomes them. Verse 10, see that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. And to make the point, Jesus tells a story about God welcoming us. You know how annoying it is, don't you, to lose something. In our house, we lose two things. Uh, we lose jigsaw pieces, and we lose children. Maybe you know what it's like to lose your keys, your bank card, your wallet. It is all encompassing until you find it, isn't it? 
you are concerned that you have lost something. Well, that's the story of the lost sheep. It's about the lost sheep and it's about not giving up till found. And of course, in the story, God is the shepherd. God wants all of his followers to be welcomed and looked after. It tells us the truths that, number one, God cares. The shepherd has a hundred sheep. The shepherd keeps 99. He has lost just the one but, and he goes looking. He doesn't go because of the money. He doesn't go because he just likes round numbers. He went because he cares. So it is with God. Of course, there is much story of suffering in our own lives, in the world, and it's, of course, highlighted and reminded today. And often we think God does not care. Maybe he's unable to do anything about it. Maybe he doesn't care enough to do anything about it, but both of those things are not true. Here we see God going because he cares. God does care. He cares about death and grief and sadness and loss. He cares about bad memories and he cares about regrets. God cares. Number two, God cares about individuals. One sheep was lost, one percent, one in a hundred. The shepherd could have left the sheep. The shepherd could have sent someone else, but he went himself. He cared for the individual. God cares for individuals. Now, if you were to live by a zoo, and one animal you're told has been lost. One animal has, is not in the pen at night. Well, if it's a sheep, you probably wouldn't care, would you? If it was a lion, well, you'd shut your back door, wouldn't you? But God cares for all. Today, we try to remember individuals, don't we? We remember not just the genuine general horror of war but the individuals who are affected as well a friend of mine has recently become a, an army reserve chaplain and had to go to france to conduct funerals of soldiers who've been recently discovered it is about the individual in war the individual is so often lost we hear the big story but not the little one well, God cares for individuals. He doesn't forget. The one matters to him. And thirdly, God acts. The shepherd cares. He's worried by the one. But if he does nothing, it means nothing, does it? God acts. We began, of course, with John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. He, in those verses, in those words, is Jesus Christ. His friends are those who by faith follow him, those who are able to humble themselves. Laying down his life is the story of the cross. God has acted. He loves with a love that wants the best for others and gives up a great deal. And he asks us to follow him and to do the same. We're going to sing together once more now. It's a hymn that reminds us that our Father God can be with us, leading us, even through the hardest things in life. It's a song that reminds us that we can know the Lord Jesus' forgiveness because of his death. And he experienced so much that we have to go through in life as well. It's a reminder that his Holy Spirit can be there strengthening us day by day. Pam's gonna lead us as we sing. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea.
as we've moved through our service today, we've gone from remembering and giving thanks for the sacrifice of others. We've moved to confessing our own sin. And I guess the part that we play in all that's wrong in our world. And we've been challenged by God's word, what it tells us about God himself and what our response should be. And in the final part of our service, we're moving more towards how we work that response out in our own lives. Praying for God's help to do that. Committing to ourselves to doing uh, what's right in the light of all the sadnesses of the world. And that pattern moving from giving thanks through to our own response to the world's problems is reflected in our prayers just now. We begin this time of prayer with a collect for Remembrance Sunday. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On this Remembrance Sunday, let us bring before the God of peace our prayers for the world, the Church and all his people. Merciful God, we pray for peace in our hearts and homes in our nations and our world, the peace which is your will, the peace which is so badly needed. We remember today, O oh Lord, all those who have died in any kind of war throughout your world, soldiers who, who perished in the horror of battle, innocent people buried beneath the rubble from bombs from bomb attacks, men women and children attacked and killed in their towns and villages. Today we remember especially those victims of the two world wars, particularly those close to us or to our parents and grandparents. And we remember those who came home with terrible injuries, both physical and psychological, and those loved ones who never returned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the leaders of the nations, asking you to pour out your spirit of reconciliation on them. Give them a longing to bring freedom from fear and want for all peoples. Give strength and courage to those who bear heavy responsibilities for the peace of the world. We pray also for the Christian Church, called to witness your love in this generation. May Christians work with all men to break down the barriers which divide people. May those who profess one faith respect those who hold another faith and build a community where there is harmony and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, on this day of remembrance, our hearts and prayers go out to all who mourn the loss of those we have loved. When we lose someone close, we feel that part of us dies as well. But, Part of them lives on in us. Give us strength and understanding to honour and cherish that gift. And with the knowledge of your love, may we honour the past by looking to the future. Jesus Christ, 
is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. And finally, a prayer for ourselves, that we may all put our confidence in you. Give us courage and deepen our trust. You are a rock which nothing can shatter. On you we can place the whole weight of our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us end this time of prayer as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to sing a song together, Beauty for Brokenness. Rachel's going to lead us in this, and it's a song that reminds us that as Christians who have been forgiven, we want to aim to make a difference in our world around.
That wonderful song reminds us that Jesus' teaching about love drives us as Christians to work for a better and a fairer world where some of the evil that we see around us is put to one side. But it also reminds us that God promises that one day, because of the Lord Jesus' sacrifice, that will be true, that will be so in his heavenly kingdom. Thank you so much for being with us uh, today. We're coming towards the end of our time together. It doesn't seem so appropriate to have a lot of notices and, and things today, so we will we'll catch up with notices and birthdays next week. Let me just mention one thing, that this afternoon at three o'clock in St John's, we've got our memorial service, especially remembering loved ones we've lost in recent times, or um, in, more, in more distant times as well. And we invite all those who've, those families for whom we've conducted funeral services over the last couple of years. Do you please come along if that would be helpful? Do you please pray for us as we conduct that service today? In just a moment or two, we'll have our final hymn. And then Mark Holdaway is going to lead us in a final uh, prayer that helps us to, well, challenges us as we go forward from now, uh, leading our lives in God's way, in the light of all that we've remembered and done this morning. Before that, we have our final hymn. And Rachel's going to lead us as we sing, Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. We look to the Lord Jesus, the one who teaches us, the one who leads us, but the one who also died and rose again to provide uh, the forgiveness and the new start that we and our world need. Let's sing together.
Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and all people, that we may help encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of all nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all people in the cause of justice and peace and for the relief of war and suffering. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom, courage and hope and keep us faithful now and always for the honour of your name. Amen. O God of truth and justice, help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and to fix our eyes upon you. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.